hallelujah. The Bible declares, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. The Bible declares that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So into and to his gates with thanksgiving. Into and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. And the mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Praise the Lord, everybody. If we go back for a moment
and tell him what he means to you. Hallelujah, thank hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. hallelujah. Come thank on and tell him how much you love him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm reminded of all the stories in the Bible. Hallelujah, but one in particular where God healed the lame. Hallelujah, where he couldn't walk. The Bible says that he was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 long years. And Jesus spoke a word to him and he healed him. And I don't know about you, but I'm willing to allow God to blow my mind. I want him to do the impossible. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blow our mind, Father. Yes, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything. The song simply says this. Blow my mind. Blow my mind. Blow my mind. Do the impossible. Say 
on and bless his name. Give me a little bit of, give me a little bit of juice, Joe. Oh, come on and bless his name. Oh, come on and magnify the name of Jesus. Oh, we come and bless his holy and his righteous name. Come on and exalt the name of Jesus. High in all the earth. Come on, exalt the name of Jesus. High in all the earth. Because he's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Oh, my God is worthy. It was raining on this morning. But now the sun is shining. And the sun is not only shining outside. But the sun is shining in our hearts today. Because of the Lord my God. Because of Jesus Christ. He is worthy. 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 All across the airwaves. Magnify the name of Jesus. Let's move your heart into a place of worship. Let's move your heart into a place of worship to exalt the name of Jesus. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. If you can hear my voice, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord Jesus his just due. Because he woke you up on this morning. He's been better to you than you've been to yourself. He's even loved you when there was no love in the land. He thought about you when no one else would think about you. He came to your bedside and he ministered unto you when you needed a friend. So let's come on and exalt the name of Jesus. When your body began to give up on you, he came and he spoke with you and he ministered unto your spirit and he gave you the strength to press on. So let's exalt the name of Jesus because he's worthy. He is worthy. The Bible said if we had 10,000 tongues, that that would not even be enough. Let's move, let's move out of our flesh and let's move into the place of worship. Let's invite the Lord in right now so that his presence would fill the room where you are so that we can break down the stronghold so that we can pull down the stronghold so that we can break the chain so that we can be set free in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free. We are worthy people. We are worthy people. We are worthy. We are worthy. We are worthy. You are worthy. God has made you worthy. Fix my sound, Joe. You are worthy on this morning. God is so good. He is so good. He is so grateful. He is so grateful. He is grateful. And he's worthy to be praised. We bring you greetings on this morning from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Community Church Outreach Center. If you hear my voice, I want you to give our devotional leaders a hand clap for helping you enter into a place of worship. I want y'all to say in your spirit, we're almost there. We're almost there. There's going to be a time where the church doors are going to be open again fully and we're going to be able to come into the house of God and we're going to be able to exalt the name of Jesus and nobody's mad but the devil. Just when the devil thought that he had defeated the church. Just when the devil thought he had defeated the church. When the church doors closed, uh, I can imagine the devil was again in a state where when Christ was at Calvary and he thought that he had crucified and murdered our Jesus to eternal, to be no more, all but to just to find out that Jesus Christ, he rose on the third day. And when he got up, he had all power in his hand just when the devil sent this pandemic through the land and the church doors had to close and we could not come into the sanctuary but what he did not know that we took the sanctuary with us what he did not know that the praise got louder because we were in a place of expectancy that we knew that God was going to get us back to this place again ain't nobody mad but the devil on this morning 
So I'm excited. I'm excited about the movement of God and the moving of the spirit and to see what God is doing in this movement and in this space and in this time right now through the people of God. And so I'm excited and I want you to be excited on this morning. Overseer McCullough, she sends her love. Bishop, I send my love to you. I'm not going to trouble your patience long, but I must give you what thus saith the Lord. There is a word from the Lord to encourage you on this morning to know that you are somebody. I will use for a brief topic this morning. I am somebody. I want you to say that with me and I want you to let that get down into your craw. I want you to let that get down into your spirit that I am somebody. And I want you to know that when Jesus Christ went to the cross and when he got up from the grave, he made you somebody. I am somebody. Why? Because of the Lord thy God, he said it, and because of Jesus Christ. Because of the death, because of the burial, and because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I am somebody. And I want you to take that with you because we have so many things that come against us that begin to test that statement and it begin to make you second guess that statement. But I want you to know that the Holy Ghost in you, he makes you somebody. So I want you to say that again. I, I am somebody. And I want you to know that. I want you to carry that. I want you to take that with you because as long as you have that with you, you can go and you can achieve the things that God has for you. I am somebody. And when you look at the statement, I am somebody, look at the first two words. I am. I am. Because the God said that I am. Moses asked God, God, when I go before your great people, God, they ask me who sent me. Who shall I say? God said, you tell my people that I am sent you. You tell my people that I am sent you. You tell my people that I am sent you. I am. It covers everything. It covers everything. Whatever you need, I am that. Whatever you're searching for, I am that. Whatever you haven't achieved in this life, I am that. Whatever they told you you wasn't, I am that. Whatever, when they left you by the roadside, I am that. When the doctors gave up on you, I am that. When the doctors wanted to give you all these medications and tell you you wasn't going to make it, I am that. When your children would not obey you, I am that. When your husband walked out on you and left you, I am that. When your wife wouldn't be a wife to you, I am that. That. When your friends forsook you, I am that. When you did not get your high school education, I am that. When you did not get the job position, I am that. When, when, when you begin to deal with the issues of your, of your childhood, I am that. When you approach by the things that you, you, you couldn't achieve when you was a child, I am that. When mom couldn't give you the things as a child and they travel with you now, I am that. He said, tell them I am sent you. And so I am somebody. Why? Because the Lord thy God said so. Through Christ Jesus. Most holy and wise Father, our God, I'll come to you this morning and I'll usher you in, God. I ask for your presence, God. I ask that you would allow me to decrease, that you would increase, dear God, that across these airways, dear God, that I may speak a word to encourage your people, Lord God, to know that they are somebody through I am, Lord God. To let them know, dear God, that you're always mindful and you've always been, Lord God, concerned about the state of, Lord God, the church, and not only the church, dear God, but we as individuals, dear God. God, I ask you to open up ears, dear God. I ask you to close some ears. I ask you, Lord God, to break chains, dear God. I ask you to build up, Lord God. I ask you to fill in, dear, dear God. I ask you to do all the things, dear God, that you know your people need at this point and in this present time, dear God. 
that no one else is able to accomplish but you, dear God. And I ask you, dear God, to do those things, Lord God. Why? Because you've made us somebody through Christ Jesus. These things I ask only in the sweet and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I bring you greetings again from my Lord and my Savior. I know somebody out there right now are going through some trying times and somebody want to give up. And I know this pandemic has brought so many challenges before the people of God. But I want you to know that God has an answer for you on this morning. So many things have been revealed to us through this pandemic. Some of us have found out, Lord God, that we didn't have relationship with you through this pandemic. Some of us found out that the relationships in our marriages, that they weren't as good as we thought they were. Some of us found out that being tied in and locked in together, Lord God, that we found out we did not even like some things about ourselves. But God, we thank you, Lord God, that we are somebody because of Christ Jesus, because of all the things that has been revealed out of this pandemic, Lord God. We thank and praise God that we know, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit that you made us to be somebody, Lord God. And we, 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 we know, Lord God, that because of Jesus Christ and because of his resurrection from the grave that we can achieve and we can accomplish it. We can supersede all the things that we found out about ourselves and all all the things that we found out about other folk, Lord God, that we know, dear God, that none of these things will supersede who I am in Christ Jesus. And so, God, I thank you on this morning. I want to share a brief testimony with you, even through this pandemic. And you may have heard me touch the, touch the topic, I mean, touch the, uh, the tip of this testimony, because somebody needs to know that God is still healing. Somebody needs to know that God is still delivering. Somebody needs to know in spite of your title and in spite of your place in Christ Jesus that some things are still going to come to test you and to try you. But the important thing is, is how you approach them. Somebody needs to know even though I've given my life to Jesus Christ, brother JC, it does not matter that in this outer body and in this world that I live in, I'm still going to be challenged. Challenged that even though I'm challenged, it does not change the fact that I am somebody in Christ Jesus. And somebody needs to know that that I'm even though I'm going through warfare, and even though I may have to lose some loved ones coming this way, and even though it appears to be bad on the outside, none of these things has anything to do with who I am in Christ Jesus. None of these things usurp who God made me in Christ Jesus. Just on February of last year, February the 9th, if I'm not mistaken, I was installed as the pastor of Community Church Outreach Center. And, and, and our overseer, my biological mother, Carrie Avernell McCullough, she moved to a place of overseeing Mike. And she allowed me through the spirit of God to move into pastoring, to lead God's people on February the 9th. Somebody say two months later. Two months later, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And, and, and I could not understand why God now? What, what about me, God? But God let me know that he is greater than the prostate cancer. How many of you know that, that, that when you press your way to Christ Jesus, that you know that there are things that's going to come to challenge you. But the prostate cancer has nothing to do with who I am in Christ Jesus. The prostate cancer, it has nothing to do with my eternity in Christ Jesus. The prostate cancer, it has nothing to do do with the anointing that's down on the inside of me. The prostate cancer does not mean that Jesus does not love me, but it, what it lets me know is that he's working out. He's working out something in me, and the devil see what God is doing in me, so he has to try to destroy me. How many of you know that you are somebody? How many of you know that you are somebody? How many of you know that you are somebody in Christ Jesus? This pandemic is causing people to lose their mind because of the challenges, because of the things that they're being faced with. How many of you know that this, this pandemic has no power over the people of God? And so I ask God, God, if, it, this, if, if this is one of the thorns in me, 
then let thy will be done. But I'm going to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. I went to the doctor one time and the numbers was bad. I went back and the numbers are perfect. You better tell me. You better tell me. You better tell me. If you on this airway and, 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 and the devil has challenged you and God has changed it, you better shout where you at right now and you better know that the Lord is on your side. Some of you out there who hear me, you have been challenged. Uh, you have been left alone. Uh, times have changed the situation in your life. But God has proven to you that he is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He's everything pertaining to your life. You ought to be shouting right now. So I go back to the doctor and ain't nobody mad but the devil now because the prostate cancer is totally in remission. The numbers are totally perfect. It's been a trying in the flesh. <laughs> But God is greater than the flesh. It's been a trying in the flesh. But God is greater in the, than the flesh. It's been a trying for my wife. But God is greater than my wife. It's been a trying in your home. But God is greater than your home. God is still healing. Some people don't believe it. But God is still healing. God is still delivering. God is still delivering and he's still healing. Come on up here, Deacon Andrews, and come here right quick. I'm going to show you another testimony. Come on, Deacon. I'm going to show you another testimony and how the devil wanted to destroy my, my, my spiritual father right here. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer too. And it went all through his bones. And God delivered him. There's no cancer in his body today. There's no cancer in his body today. Why? Because the Lord thy God. He said that I, I am somebody. You are somebody. You are somebody in Christ Jesus. Ain't nobody mad but the devil on this morning. You ought to shout. You ought to shout. You ought to shout this morning. You can be seated, Doc. Ain't nobody mad this morning. You could be seated, Doc. Ain't nobody mad this morning but the devil. See, people are locked in and locked away and they think that God has forgotten about them. But God has not forgotten about your labor. God has not forgotten about your prayer. God has not forgotten about your supplication. God has not forgotten about your tears that you cried. God remembers the tables of your heart. But you're going to have to exalt Jesus. Come on and say it with me. Exalt Jesus. You're going to have to exalt Jesus. You're going to have to exalt Jesus. You're going to have to exalt Jesus. Right. And all the earth. Whatever it is that you want. God has it. I know we say it all the time, but it is so true. Whatever you want, God has it. But you're going to have to exalt Jesus high in all the earth. Because I am, you are somebody. Never let nobody take that from you. I'm going to turn my Bible to Psalms. Psalms 8. Turn your Bibles with me to Psalms 8. Psalms 8. I have so much, but I know I can't give it all to you, but I'm going to give you what thus saith the Lord. You are somebody. And I want you to remember that. Why? Because of the Lord thy God, through Christ Jesus. You have been made to be somebody. You find here in Psalms 8, verses 4 through 9, we're going to extract out of the psalm. And you find here David being close to God, chosen by God, 
How many of you know that you've been chosen? How many of you know that you've been chosen? How many of you know that Ephesians say that your life has been predestinated? So which means that your future has already been predetermined. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what road you travel down, JC, it's already been predetermined that you are somebody in Christ Jesus. It does not matter what obstacle come your way, Naraja, you are somebody in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter that you are a young lady and you have not lived your life and you want to do everything in this world, but what you need to remember is your life has already been predestined by God. Whatever you hear in your ear and the the things that people have told you it will not usurp what God has said about your life it will not lead you in a different path so all the things that run through your mind from the things that have been said to you you need to understand that the Lord thy God has already chosen your footsteps you need to understand that you must walk up right before God and he will then give you all the desires of your heart you need to understand that some of the things that you've heard in your life and from some of the people in your your life is not from God but God has already predestined your life young daughter do it God's way and you'll be the great woman that God wants you to be our lives have already been predetermined we're fighting against a fight that we cannot win your life your days have already been predetermined by God that's a good thing so David here says in uh, chapter six in, in, in Psalms 8, verse 6, verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him? He asked a question here. And the son of man that thou visited him. For thou has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. You see the exclamation point, and if you have a good Bible, you'll see the exclamation point at the end of the comment. How excellent is thy name in all the earth there's no other name that you're going to find in the earth that's more excellent than the name of Jesus there's no name in the heart of the earth sister Tanya you're going to be able to find that will that will be able to accomplish the things that can be accomplished through the name of Jesus uh, you can call on any other name you can even call Quentin all day long you can call Quentin all night long but his his his, 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 his things that he's able to deliver unto you that, that, that they only can go but so far but when you call on the name of Jesus it will go past it will go beyond the Bible said that he will go past our understanding you can call on your husband and your wife all night and all day long they can only go but so far but when you call on the name of Jesus Somebody say that I am somebody because I can call on the name of Jesus. Oh, man. So you find here, David, he's speaking and he asked a question. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And also, even in this scripture, you see Jesus. You see Jesus here in this scripture, because as we go into Colossians. Y'all know I'm in Colossians right now. And, and Colossians has been so good to us. It's been so good to us. As you see here, he says here in verse 
uh, 5, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. We see in Colossians chapter 1, he says three things here in Colossians. He said a lot in Colossians, but I want to pull out three things and we're going to get back to, to Psalms. But look here in Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. Verse 15, verse 21, and verse 23 are the points, okay? He said, who is the image of the invisible God? Talking about who? Jesus, who he has crowned. He has crowned Jesus, and he has not only crowned Jesus, but he has also crowned you. You've also been crowned. He said, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created. All things were created by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let's go down to verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. Jesus Christ is our head. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from, from the dead? Look, that in all things he might have preeminence. That he may have the first. He, Jesus Christ. And look how the context of the scripture changes. Okay? He has preeminence. For it blessed the Father that in him, still talking about Jesus, should all fullness dwell. Still talking about Jesus in 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. But here's where the, 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 the language began to change. He said listen. And you. He was talking about Jesus first and now he's talking to you and I. He says and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now, come on somebody, say yet now. Yeah. I am somebody. Come on and say it again. Yet now, yeah. I am somebody. Why? Because he had reconciled us. He has settled the debt that was between you and God. How many of you know that there was a debt that had to be paid between you and God because of the sin that you had performed in your life from your mother's womb? But yet now we have been reconciled through Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's had the first preeminence. He had the first things. He made all things that he may get the glory. And now because he's getting the glory, we're getting the glory with him. Why? Because we're in Christ Jesus. And the Bible said uh, in Psalms 8, he said, you crowned him, uh, man, he talking about uh, with glory uh, and with honor. Uh, how many of you know that you've been crowned with glory and you've been crowned with honor on this morning? Why? Because you're in Christ Jesus. Uh, I am somebody. Stop downplaying who you are in the heart of the earth. Uh, you are somebody. The Bible said that you are the salt of the earth. Uh, and if the salt loses its savior, wherewith it's good for nothing to be trotted under men's foot. But I am somebody. He says here, he settled these things in the body of his flesh through the death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable, unreprovable in his sight. If, here's the third part. The first part was talking about what Christ did. Then he talking about you. But now we know that there's always a if. If. Sometimes we don't want to accept the if in our life. <laughs> Sometimes we hide from the if in our lives. Sometimes we, 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 we move in life and we find out if I had not 
met Monica. Oh my God, I might be in trouble today. I thank God that I met Monica and that if, if, but if Monica hadn't met me, then where would she be? Sometimes we don't want to face the ifs because the ifs hurt. See, because the ifs is reality. The if is what's going to take you to the next phase of your life. The if is what's going to cause you to go through. The if is what you don't want to do. But the Bible said that if ye continue in the faith. Not only continued, it's one thing to run a race, but it's, a, it's another thing to win the race. You can run the race, but who wants to run the race and don't win the race? If you, if you get in a race and you don't want to win the race, you might as well stay home. You might as well not even put your shoes on. If you don't, if you don't want to, if you don't want to win uh, that the, the, the battle that the Lord has already won at Calvary, then you might as well go head on and throw the cross, throw the it right now because listen you're always going to win in Christ Jesus you're always going to come out on the best side in Christ Jesus if 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 ye continue in the faith if I continue to love Bishop McCullough no if I continue to love my husband, no. If I continue to love my job, no. If I continue to love my car, no. If I continue to love my best football team, no. But if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope, because he is hope in the faith. It's hope being grounded and settled. It's hope in Christ Jesus. He's because why? Because he is the hope of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard. You've heard these things. These things have been preached unto you. Paul said these things unto you. Overseer have said these things unto you. You've heard these things since you've been a child. These things have been preached to you. But for some reason, we still find ourselves struggling with the if. People, people are walking away from God. People are walking away from the body of Christ every day. I'm not talking about the church because the church is, is you. The church is in you. But people are walking. Look, you can walk away from the church. You ain't going far. <laughs> because the church goes with you. But you can walk, you, look, but you can walk away from God. You can walk away from God. Then what follows you? Death. But look what has happened to you because you sit now in Christ Jesus. When God crowned Jesus with glory and honor, you have been crowned with glory and honor as well. So look what has, look what has happened. You, the, when you look at glory, it's a high renown or honor won by a notable achievement. Glory. Jesus Christ was crowned with the glory from God the Father because what he achieved at Calvary. Because what he conquered through a curse. Jesus Christ conquered victory through a curse at Calvary for you and for me. And I want you to know you did too. Jesus Christ had to resist unto blood. It was a blood sacrifice. Jesus Christ had to resist unto death. And so do you. You must resist. You don't have to resist unto death in a physical manner. But you must resist unto death. You must die unto death in a spiritual manner. Jesus had to die unto death to God. We must die to the flesh unto God okay Jesus had to die in the physical unto God we must die to the flesh 
unto God. Why? Because we know that as Paul went on and taught, he told us to do what? Mortify. Mortify means to kill, to destroy the works of your flesh. How many know that your flesh will deceive you? How many know that your flesh will lie to you? How many know that your flesh will cause you more pain than, 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 than good days? How many know that your flesh, and, and, and you know I'm talking right, because the older you get, Lord have mercy. From a child to an adult, even in a child state. So many people don't want to talk about it, right? They say it's, it's taboo to some people about spanking their children. The Bible told you to spank your child. The Bible was a little bit more harsh about it and people don't want to hear it. And that's why we're in the state that we're in because we won't do it God's way. When you, when you spare the rod, the Bible says that you will spoil the child. Now see, we talk about the word spoiled in a sense where it means you give the child everything. You've spoiled the child. But the Bible talks about spoil being bad, no good. The child is for no good when you spare the rod. And so some people say you teach the child how to be violent when you spank them. No, you don't if you spank them with love. If you spank a child, then send a child off to try to process and figure out why you spank them, then you will have a problem. But if you spank a child and you take the child and love the child and then, and then uh, 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 do what God do to you, build you back up after he spanked you for your disobedience, then the child will be fine. Nobody's saying physically abuse a child. You need to go to jail if you physically abuse a child. Some of us in here, some of us in here know we should be in jail. Some of y'all parents out there listening know you should have went to jail by now because you physically abused your children. I had the best, listen, I had the best dad in the world and nobody dad was better than mine. But my father be locked up today. They'd have put my father under the jail. But I thank him for every correction. I thank him for every rod that he put on my back because it, it kept me from being a fool today. Somebody need to hear me about your children. You want to save your child's life? Do, what the, do it the way God say do it. But you've been... You've been, you've been crowned with this glory. And you've also been crowned with honor. It's a high respect that you have. You are somebody. When you enter the room and when you enter the space, people should act different when you come around. If you're a child of the Most High God and you enter the room and you enter the space and people act the same way, then that means you're doing something wrong. And I'm going to tell, tell you just for my own self, I have a friend of mine. And, 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 and listen, because we're forever learning. And I, and I found myself too comfortable, even, even recently, that my friend felt like he could address me any kind of way. You know what I, I said? What am I doing wrong? Because, and you all out there know that when people address you as a child of God and, and when they talk to you any kind of way, don't you feel something inside? Don't you feel like that you've been violated? Because that's, listen, that's the, that's the king of kings in you. That's the Lord of Lord in you. That's, that's the holy God that's in you that's, that's being affected because, see, your flesh is okay. But when you feel something inside that, listen, you shouldn't talk to me like that. It's not that you feel like you're better than the person, but they should address you in a respectful way. Why? Because you are a child of the Most High God. Why? Because you have been crowned with glory. You have been crowned with honor. And honor comes with respect. Honor comes with respect. If you honor me, respect comes with me. And we as the children of God, we all should be honored. 
When you travel, when you move, it should be respectful. If people come around you and they can just talk any old kind of way and, and, and curse and say all manner of things against you and what most of us do, we laugh. I'm teaching now. We laugh. The laugh is saying it's okay. I'm cool with that. We got to cut some people out of my life. I done, cut this, I done cut this brother out of my life. He don't even know it. I done cut him out of my life. He don't even know it. Because I've been crowned with glory and honor. Being crowned with glory and honor means I don't have to speak about it. I've, I've been crowned with glory and honor. I have the authority to make the decision to change it, to just move. But some of y'all stay there and some of y'all and be again entangled with it and it becomes a yoke of bondage to you and people treat you any old kind of way. Some of y'all need to just move. I'm about done. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it anyway. God been tugging my God been tugging at my pants. He said, "Come back, son. I need you to I need you to go back and preach uh, the way that I gave it to you. I need you to go back and give it the way I gave it to you. Because see, people want to come play church now. We not playing church no more. Hallelujah." People are dying. People with families are being broken. Children are committing suicide. Men are committing adultery on their wives. Wives are being adulterous with husbands. People are getting incest in their family. I got to preach the glory of God. Might be here by myself. But I got to give you Jesus and him crucified because we're about to get out of here. We're not going to be here long. Uh, some of our days have shortened. Uh, if, we, if God showed us the number of days that's on our lives now, we would get fearful if God would allow us to see. But somebody in here right now, your day has been shortened. But you've been crowned with glory and honor because you are somebody. Jesus Christ died and made you somebody. I'm about done, y'all. I'm about done. But we got to continue in the faith, grounded and settled. He said, and be not moved. Be not moved. Be not moved what? From the hope. Be not moved from the hope of the gospel. The hope for tomorrow is in the gospel. The hope for tomorrow, your tomorrow is in the word. Your, 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 your tomorrow is not on the job. Your tomorrow is not in your husband or your wife or your children or in your 401k that we working so hard to make sure we got enough to make it. God said that I will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Your life has been predetermined already. Whatever's in the 401k, it's not going to take care of you anyway. It's already been predetermined. Your tomorrow has already been set in Christ Jesus. If you're a child of the Most High God, your 4 okay is running over and it's going to be okay. You just got to serve God and you got to lift up the name of Jesus and you got to tell somebody that Jesus loved them in spite of their ways. Uh, we say all the time that where is our life that it is in Christ Jesus. If, if your life is in Christ Jesus, then where is it? You don't know. It's hid in Christ Jesus. Wherever God is, that's where I am. Wherever the Lord is, that's where I am. At the right hand of the Father, that's where I am. In Christ Jesus is where I am. I'm okay because I'm in Christ Jesus. And that's why we started off and I was able to say that I am somebody. Why? Because of the Lord thy God through Christ Jesus. I am somebody. You are somebody. Why? Because of the Lord thy God through Christ Jesus. Get that in you and hold on to that. And see what God do for you. Let's look at Hebrews 2 and 9 and we're going to get out of here. Oh, but before we go to Hebrews 2 and 9, let me, let me, I don't know if y'all got this nugget, but let me share this nugget with you. Go to Psalm, I know you Bible experts already know this, 
But let's go to Psalms uh, uh, 82. Y'all know that. Y'all, you Bible experts know that. I hear y'all now. Yep, uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. You are somebody. And this is what I want you to take on tomorrow. Look at Psalms, look at Psalms 82 and 6. 82 and 6. I have said, ye are gods. Did you know you were a god? Little g. Y'all knew that was right there, didn't y'all? See, I told y'all I got all these church folk in here with me. I don't know. They, they knew. Which means you have preeminence as well. Did you hear that? You know what preeminence mean, right? That you have the first. Jesus Christ has preeminence over all things. Why? Because all things was created by him for him. The psalmist said here that we are gods. Little g. But we're gods. Which gives us preeminence. I have preeminence. Over what? Whatever I speak. I have the first of whatever I speak. You want love? You have preeminence of love. You want forgiveness? You have preeminence of forgiveness. You want a new job? You have preeminence over the new job. You want a new home? You have preeminence over new home. You want deliverance? You have deliverance. Over. You have preeminence over deliverance. You have it because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss out of the desires of the lust of your flesh. We don't ask God for things to please our flesh, but we ask God for things so that we can be a benefit to somebody else. This is why we ask God for things so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. But we got it backwards. I, I want it for me because I want to hoard up as much as I can. But no, we need to understand that I want it so that I can enlighten and esteem my brother or my sister higher than myself. We're gods. Matthew said in Matthew 6 and 26, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. You sow and you reap. The fowls of the air don't sow and reap. God has designed you to sow and reap. Okay? Nor gather into bonds. We gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feed of them. Are ye not much better than they? I am somebody. If God's going to take care of the fowls of the air, if God's going to take care of the beasts that creep upon the earth, then how much better do you think God will take care of you? The one who esteemed Jesus Christ high in all the earth. The one who acknowledged that I am somebody. Why? Because of the Lord thy God through Christ Jesus. Y'all come on, rest on your feet. Y'all look like you're tired here. You look like, you, 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 you look like you're ready to go to sleep here. You don't, look, you don't look like that you are somebody in Christ Jesus. You don't look like you, well I, well I guess I'm hoping, I'm just hoping that you already knew that. Because if somebody came by and told me who I was, so I don't expect a, a, good, re, a good shout or amen out of y'all because y'all know who you are. But I guess I need to get me a whole bunch of folk in here who don't know who they are. But even though you know that you are a child of the Most High God, it should excite the spirit in you. It should elevate the spirit in you. It should cause an emotional reaction in you. It should cause a chain reaction in your spirit. It should cause a movement out of your flesh because of the spirit that's down in you. But I know y'all know. I pray that someone out there who hears my voice, who did not know or who do not know the Lord thy God, 
as their Lord and their Savior, that they would ask God to forgive them of their sins. Ask God to forgive you. Be, be godly sorry. Ask Him to come into your life and, and be your Lord and to be your Savior. And He will be just that for you. Ask for forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you and to come into your life. Confess your faults one to another. Ask God to forgive you. He will do just that. He will come into your life. He will be your Lord and he will be your Savior. Then what you need to do, you need to find a church home. If you hear me right now, say, God, forgive me. I confess my faults before the throne, before the great heavens. And I ask you, God, to please send the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Ghost. The part of you that you have designed and fixed to dwell in man. I desire that. And if you ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit today, he will do that. Ask God, say it. It's not a surgical procedure, but it is a surgical procedure that has already been performed by God for you. Just ask God, please send your spirit to me. Forgive me, I am godly sorry. And he will do that. If there's someone out there who has been given a diagnosis of any sort from your doctor, know that God is a healer. But you must first be grounded and settled in the word. You must first mortify the deeds of the flesh. God will do just what he say he will do if ye continue. We want God to bless, we want God to deliver, and God is not answering prayers because a lot of us have not continued in the faith. We're going through the motions of the faith. And I'm not talking about coming to church, but I'm talking about believing in Jesus Christ. God said, if you continue, that the hope of the gospel will be in your life. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, that glory and honor will follow. You will be crowned in heaven. You will be seated right now in heavenly places. And he said, no good thing he will withhold from you. He said that he will be a father to the fatherless, even those who have biological fathers in their land. He said he'll be a father to you. He'll be a mother to the motherless and more than anything he said he'll be a friend the Bible said that a friend will stay closer than a brother how many of you need a friend on this morning in Jesus Jesus said that I want to be a friend to you Jesus said on this morning, I will no longer call you a servant, but I will call you my friend. If ye be grounded and
and settle in the faith. God is good this morning. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Come on and clap your hands for the Lord this morning. Come on, give him the praise on this morning. Ain't nobody mad but the devil on this morning because God has spoken to his people and we understand that I am somebody in Christ Jesus. I can exalt the name of Jesus because he lives. If you desire prayer, I want you to go to the website Put your name there and we will pray for you. If you need a church home, you can contact us through the website and you are more than welcome to get on this train. This train is a one-way ticket to heaven. We're not making no stops at the nightclub. We're not making no stops at the happy hour. We're not making no stops at the mall in Towson, but we're going straight to see what the Lord says. We're going straight to heaven. We're not going to make no stop in, at, at the stop of foolishness. We're not making no stop at the stop of backbiting. We're not making no stop and picking up no whoremongers and no adulterers, but we're going straight. We're going straight to heaven. But the whoremonger can get on. The adulterer can get on. The fornicator can get on. The backbiter can get on. The homosexual can get on. The liar can get on. The robber can get on. But we're going to see Jesus just as he is. There's no seat on this ride that's too good for you. The seat of, of Jesus Christ is for everyone. If you want to turn from your wicked ways, come on and get on this ride with us because we are our brother's keeper. We are our brother's keeper. Regardless of his affliction, we are our brother's keeper. Regardless of the sin, the hidden sin that my brother deals with, I am my brother's keeper. Why? Because I am somebody. Why? Because of the Lord thy God through Christ Jesus. So I am able, I am equipped. Because I am a God in Christ Jesus. I am able and I am equipped to help those who were not equipped. We say it humbly because we know good, no good thing dwells in this flesh. We know that without, 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 without the Holy Ghost, we can do no things, but with the Holy Ghost, we can do all things. <laughs> I can help those who can't help themselves. Why? Because of the spirit that's in me. I can do all things. I can lead somebody to the plan of salvation. I can give somebody life because I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I am nobody. But with Christ, I am everything. I understand that I have no power, but I do have power. I understand that all the glory belongs to Jesus. I understand that without Jesus, I can do nothing. But with Jesus Christ, I can do all things. I can raise the dead because I am in Christ Jesus. I can speak life because I'm in Christ Jesus. I am somebody. 
I say that humbly. I say that understanding the divine nature of God. I understand that understanding the trinity of heaven. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and then man. But I can do all things through Christ Jesus. God bless you on this morning. Know that if you want peace in your home, that you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Know that if you don't want to receive the affliction of your body, that you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Understand that the affliction may remain, but it will not, it will not overtake your mind. Your mind can do things of the impossible. Because if your mind is stayed on him, your mind will blow your mind. Your mind will blow your mind. When God begins to speak to your mind, when God begins to reveal the things that he has done in you, it blows your mind. God is good this morning. I pray that you have a great week on this morning. I pray that heaven smile upon you. Lift up the name of Jesus. Put the Lord in all things and first in all things that you do. God love you on today. May heaven smile upon you. We love you here at Community Church Outreach Center. Where all things are done in decency and in order. And by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Bishop McCullough love you. And if it's the Lord's will, I'll see you on Wednesday. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you.